All right, thanks so much for joining us once again on the Bright Side. Continuing on just a little bit more about fructose malabsorption syndrome. If you're thinking that you may have an, imp, an issue with fructose, but you're not sure, if you have an autoimmune disease, if you have skin issues, if you have mental health issues, if you're an insomniac, if you're dealing with chronic fatigue, if you can't lay off the sugar, if you can't stop eating, if you have digestive health issues, and especially if you have a combination of any of these problems, you can at least suspect fructose malabsorption issues, fructose malabsorption syndrome. Now, if you want to find out for sure if this is a problem for you, there's a couple things you could do to confirm a fructose malabsorption diagnosis. First of all, you can have a hydrogen breath test done. That's where you eat a bunch of fructose. And then you have your breath measured for bacterial outgassings, hydrogen in your breath. Or you can just eat a bunch of fructose from fruit or even straight fructose. You can get fructose powder at pretty much any health food store. You can eat a bunch of fructose, and then you can see how you feel. If you have fructose malabsorption issues, you are going to know it. You'll be bloated, you'll be gassy, and you'll be uncomfortable 15, 20 minutes or so after you ingest a whole bunch of fructose. By the way, if you're a diabetic, you may have been told that fructose is safer as a safer sugar for you to use than glucose. I remember as, as I was growing up, and even when I was in pharmacy school, diabetics were always under the impression they could eat all the fruit they want because fructose, for some reason, was not a problem for diabetics. That's because fructose is handled primarily by liver processing rather than by insulin. It was believed, it's still believed by many people, that insulin is not involved in fructose metabolism, and to a large extent, that's true. However, recently, it's been found that there is a connection, an insulin connection, to the processing of fructose as well as to ordinary glucose. Everybody knows that glucose can cause elevations in insulin, but just recently, this past April, an article was published in the journal Science that discussed the findings of scientists at the University of Rhode Island that showed that fructose, fruit sugar, can turn on the pancreas' the secretion of insulin too. So if you're a diabetic, you are not out of the woods if you think that you're okay by using fructose or fruit sugar. Bottom line, folks, is all sugars, in fact, possibly even the sweet taste itself, can have an effect on the insulin system. One of the phases of insulin secretion is something called the cephalic phase. Cephalic means your brain or your head. And there's actually a brain connection to the secretion of insulin. Simply thinking about sweet taste, simply thinking about sugar can activate the insulin system. And even tasting it, the sweet taste, can have an effect on insulin secretion. And because of insulin's wide-ranging effects on all kinds of body systems, the circulatory system, the blood vessel system, the stress management system, the growth and cell division system. Insulin affects all of these. Because of insulin's wide-ranging effects on all these different parts of the body, the less sweet you put in your diet, the better off you will be. What is up with the sweet taste anyway? Does anybody ever ask themselves, what is going on? Why do we need sweet so bad? Why are we so darned hook, hooked on this sweet taste that we're willing to kill ourselves via drugs and disease rather than lay off the sugar? That's at least a question that we want to explore, especially if we're having a problem weaning ourselves off of sugar. And if you have FMS, fructose malabsorption syndrome, there are non-sweet sugars that can be a problem too. In nature, fructose is stuck together in long chains. Glucose as well is stuck together in long chains. Sugar comes in long chains. They're called poly, for many, saccharides, or some people will call them oligo, which also means many, oligosaccharides. So in addition to the single links in the chain, that's what fructose is, some people can have sensitivities to the long fructose chains themselves. These long fructose chains are called fructans, and while these substances are nowhere near as sweet as sugar, as fruit sugar or as table sugar, fructan sensitivity can be as problematic as fructose sensitivity. And there's two very important reasons why this is something that you need to understand, especially if you're dealing with any kind of digestive problem. First of all, human beings can't turn fructose or fructans into fructose. That means unlike fructose pieces, the little single pieces of sugar which are really sweet, you're not going to get a lot of sweetness in fructans. You may not know that you're ingesting a lot of fructans and you may think you're eating really well. Some of the most important sources of fructans are veggies like broccoli and onions and garlic and they're not sweet at all. So 
You may think that you're not eating any sugar. You may think that you're eating real healthy. You're eating broccoli. You're eating Brussels sprouts and asparagus and onions and garlic. You may not know that you're ingesting fructans. And if you have some kind of malabsorption issue, you're going to end up with digestive problems from eating broccoli, for example. And you may not be linking the broccoli to the symptoms in your digestive tract. You come back. These are folks who say to me all the time, oh, I'm eating really wonderfully and oh, I eat only vegetables. I don't eat anything processed, but I still have digestive problems. Well, the problem could very well be these long chains of fructose that don't taste sweet, that are found in vegetables and that you don't even know you're having a problem with. And this brings us to the second important point about fructan, fructan malabsorption, and that's the fact that there are a lot of foods that are supposed to be good for our health, i.e. vegetables, that can really mess up our digestive system if we are predisposed. You can be a vegetarian. You can be staying away from processed foods. You can be eating only raw. You can be doing all the things that you think you're supposed to be doing correctly, but if you have fructan malabsorption, you may still be having a digestive problem. I eat really well. I only eat raw food. I only eat vegetables. I never eat at McDonald's. I hear this all the time from people who still have digestive issues. And that's why I'm always telling you, if you're showing up with digestive symptoms, please do not think that you're eating correctly. Digestive symptoms mean only one thing, and that is you're eating the wrong food, even if it doesn't seem like you're eating the wrong food. Go by your symptoms. If you have bloating, you have gas, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, whatever, you're eating the wrong food, even if it's broccoli and cabbage and tomatoes, you're still eating the wrong stuff. All right, we'll come back and talk more about fructan and fructose malabsorption when we come back from our break. We're talking about fructose malabsorption syndrome and fructan malabsorption. Fructans are long chains of fructose. They don't taste sweet, and they're found in lots of vegetables, and you may not even know that you're having a problem with fructans. You may think that you're eating great, and you're just having digestive problem. That's why I'm always saying, if you've got a digestive problem, you've got a digestive problem. If you have a digestive issue, you're eating the wrong foods. If you have bloating, or gas, or diarrhea, or constipation, or loose stools, or whatever, you're eating the wrong stuff, and that's why it's so important to keep a digestive law, keep a food journal, where all the foods you're eating are connected to digestive symptoms. All the foods you're eating, whatever you eat, anything. That's why also it's so helpful to do a mono diet, that is where you only eat one type of food. Instead of having apple pie, just have apples. Instead of having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just have peanuts. Instead of having chicken marsala, just have a little piece of chicken. Instead of having a big complicated chef salad, just have some cucumbers. That way it's easy to isolate what foods are causing what problems. By the way, all the cruciferous vegetables, which most people consider, including myself, most people consider these vegetables to be very, very medicinal. I consider them to be very medicinal. Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, bok choy. The cruciferous vegetables are especially high in fructan. So are onions and garlic. So are mushrooms. Peas contain a good amount of fructan. And so do sweet potatoes and so do avocados. These are all foods that are normally considered to be healthy foods. But if you have fructose or fructan malabsorption problems, you could very well be reacting to even these very important foods. One of the sneakiest places where you're going to find these fructans is in snack bars and protein bars and energy bars. Food processors love fructans because fructans are considered to be a form of fiber. So these kinds of foods can be used as fillers and they can be expanders. And you can see commercials on TV that tell you about how wonderful the food is because it has lots of fiber. But if you have fructan malabsorption, you can react to these kinds of foods. Fiber One snack bars are a classic example. If you look at the ingredient deck of a Fiber One snack bar, by the way, you should always be looking at ingredient decks, especially in processed foods. If you look at an ingredient deck of a Fiber One snack bar, the first ingredient you're going to see is chicory root extract. Now, how could anyone who is not a nutritionist or not a food chemist know that chicory root extract is just another term for fructan? Sometimes fructan will be called oligosaccharide. Sometimes fructan will be called inulin. Attention, anyone with digestive symptoms, be an ingredient deck reader and know your ingredients. Another hidden source of fructans is grains, especially wheat. 
barley contains fructans, rye contains fructans. All grains are going to give you a little bit of fructans. Spelt contains fructans. Brown rice contains fructans. And remember, the odds are really good that you are one of the folks who's going to have a problem with fructans or fructose. One out of three Americans is dealing with FMS, fructose malabsorption syndrome. And if you have any digestive health issue, if you have IBS or Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, the odds are even higher that you have a fructose or fructan malabsorption issue. This is one reason why I say avoiding grains entirely is a much more effective di- uh, dietary health strategy than just glo- going gluten-free for everyone who has digestive health issues. If you are dealing with any digestive health issues, stay away from grains. You don't need them. They're more than likely causing more problems than good. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to folks with digestive issues who feel like all they need to do is avoid gluten. Go gluten-free. You see all these gluten-free foods out on the supermarket, and people think, I can have my gluten-free brownies, I can have my gluten-free pizza, I can have my gluten-free beer, I can have my gluten-free whatever, not realizing that there's all kinds of other things, including fructans, in these grains and flour products that can be a problem. Sometimes even well-meaning healthcare practitioners will fall into the same trap when they say they tell their patients to go gluten-free. Gluten is just one of the problems associated with grains, And, by the way, food processors are really guilty of taking advantage of this gluten-free mania. The only way to know if you have a problem with a certain food is to eat that food and see how you feel. Eat a lot of the food and see how you feel. Spend the whole day just eating grains. Spend the whole day just eating fructose. Spend the whole day just eating one type of food that you suspect is a problem and see how you feel. And keep in mind, fructose malabsorption is not the same as gluten intolerance in the sense that fructose malabsorption is an overloading issue. Gluten intolerance is an allergy. The body just can't handle, there's an immune reaction to gluten. When we talk about fructose malabsorption, we're talking about the body not being able to handle that much fructose. The fructose transport mechanisms become overloaded. Gluten intolerance is an issue of allergy, which means that even if you have a tiny little bit of gluten, you're going to be susceptible to gluten intolerance. On the other hand, with fructose malabsorption issues, small amounts of fructose or small amounts of fructan may be tolerable, but once you start getting Getting into more fructose or more fructan, that's where you run into the problem. One of the most important sources of fructans in the American diet is bananas. According to an article that was published in the Journal of Nutrition in 1999, July 1999, bananas account for almost 3% of the total dietary fructan consumed by Americans. In fact, next to onions and garlic and grains, most of the fructans that Americans consume comes from bananas, which, after apples, is America's favorite fruit. Another interesting idea when it comes to fructose malabsorption is the relationship between glucose and fructose. As it turns out, a little bit of ordinary glucose, which is the main sweetener in table sugar, is going to help the body handle fructose. And for this reason, you never want to be using a food that has more fructose than glucose. If you're just eating fruits and natural foods, that's not going to be a problem. However, if you're eating a lot of processed foods that contain high fructose corn syrup, that will be a problem. High fructose corn syrup is usually around 55% or more of fructose compared to glucose, and there's a lot of hidden sources of high fructose corn syrup. If you're eating processed foods, if you're drinking a lot of soda pop, chances are you're ingesting a lot of this high fructose corn syrup stuff, and if you have FMS, be warned. No matter how, no matter uh, what the commercials are telling you, about how natural high fructose corn syrup is and how high fructose corn syrup is just corn sugar and it's all the same as sugar. It is absolutely not, especially for folks with uh, fructose malabsorption syndrome, because of the higher concentration of fructose, because there's more fructose than glucose in high fructose corn syrup. All right, there's one last thing that I want to tell you about fructose malabsorption syndrome, and that is in its connection with something that may be the single most important substance in the body, certainly when it comes to anti-aging, this is, a well, case could be made that this is the most important stuff in the body, and if you're dealing with FMS, there's a good chance that you're not going to be making enough of this stuff, and it's going to have a large role to play in accelerated aging. We'll tell you what I mean when I come back from our break. Actually, we'll talk about it in our next Bright Side episode. When we come back, we'll get your phone calls. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be-